how it gum to chew five feels. Senses the stimulate. Welcome back to the stream, everybody. Hope you're all having a fantastic Wednesday or whatever day it is for you right now. And uh, we are back. So we, uh, I did an oopsie. Uh, I did a three and a half hour stream on Sunday and I, Saturday, excuse me. And I didn't really mean to. I just didn't think it would take as long as it did. And it's, but then after a certain point, it just becomes, oh, well, the, the more I dig this hole, the more I need to lie in it. Uh, so the result is that we finished Kindergarten 2 pretty quickly. Uh, in only like four streams, in only technically four streams, closer to four and a half, if I hadn't been a dumbass. But uh, but now, so we're on to the next week and we have new stuff to do. And uh, I just felt, we, uh, we just like felt like uh, doing something new starting today instead of a world of horror. So we have uh, Death and Taxes ready and up and going for uh, tonight's stream. If uh, I'm not sure, I'm not like, I know I remember this game, but I don't remember this game. I'm pretty sure it's like a it's like a papers please type game where you're like examining people's documentation and stuff. I think I only remember watching like a 20 minute video on this game. Yeah. Oh, well, did like I thought. Yeah, I, I was under the impression we had watched it at some point, and I've completely and I've completely forgotten it. <laughs> like I, I'm under the impression it's like a, a papers please type game. I could be totally wrong though. It might be like an adventure game or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll see in a moment, though. But yeah, so hope you all uh, have a good time. Hopefully it's nice and chill. But uh, And uh, let's uh, just try to get into it. Okay, all right. Cool. It should be working just fine. I uh, set the resolution, set the window. Shouldn't have to fiddle with it. Yeah, Nugget is still present, but, like, who else, you know? The pretty, uh... Cool, 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 cool. This game was almost three gigabytes to uh, install, so it's actually probably a lot bigger than I think it is. There might be a lot more going on than I uh, than I think. Yeah. Nugget will enjoy the grown-ups being deaf and taxed. As long as it is a nugget tax. Give all of the nuggets to Nugget. Three gigabytes for what I remember is a flashcard game. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, because it's three gigs, I'm wondering if I'm wondering like what we is we don't know about the game anymore. This is kit new. Lemons, start the game. Oh, I see. Fate Keeper of World Order. Hold on, I need to lean forward and read, see if I can read this. Nope, that is some arcane dialect. I, uh, that is not English. So we have a nice, interesting comic. Remember how Inscription was a card game, but then insane bullshit happened? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I remember. If that game didn't appear to have really good three-dimensional graphics, I, w I would totally want to stream it after all this time. Nice Beatles reference. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what that's from. What is going on? All right. He's been dubbed Fate. Like, Paper of Destiny or whatever the fuck. Aha! The Grim Reaper, you. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Can I change my eye color? I guess not. Oh, shit. Ooh, I like that one. This one's really good, too. 
any British funny voice I hear now is just thank goodness you're here. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's uh, it set the standard. I like this one. This one's a bit too edgy. This one seems Latin American, which I'm not. This is just funny, but this is Sans Undertale. Yeah, let's go normal. Begin the bureaucratic afterlife. Yes. Finally. The new spawn has awoken. Oh, wow. Oh, kitty cat. What a momentous day. I am honored to welcome you into our world. Spawn. Hang on. Spawn number... Two, three. Edgy, gay, funny, what, dumb, choose your fighter! <laughs> I am fate. I am the keeper of world order. Interesting. I don't care, I don't care for being just 23, can I be fate? Fate grand order, maybe? Where am I? What is this? Straight to the point. Great. You are in my office. Here to work as a Grim Reaper. Welcome to your new job as an overseer of Cosmopolis City Subdivision 4. The Sun County Wine Region. Okay, whatever that means. I know what you are thinking. And yes, your assignment is choosing humans who have to die. Pretty standard stuff. As it is your first day, try to get to know the system and do not destroy the world, yes? <laughs> Gallows humor, you see? Right, yes. <clears throat> Clear? I always like when people actually dub in a voice clear as an actual voice clear, you know? <clears throat> Instead of trying to do this weird thing where they make a like a, a sound that doesn't fit. Well, I get paid for this. Most certainly. The contract stipulates that every death gets a fair salary based on their performance accuracy. Fate, why do you sound high as balls? I mean, if you were, like, an omniscient arbiter of the universe, I think, um... Uh, I think that... <laughs> I think you might be a bit high on just omniscience, you know? Or just wife could learn a thing or two. Roger's wife either gets around or is just the butt of every joke. Marking profiles correctly is the most important task. If you mark more or less than necessary, you will not get your fee at all. Hmm. This does seem like a Papers, Please type game. Not that I'm trying to say it's clo a clone or anything, but it's like a paperwork game. Errors in secondary tasks will reduce the total, even if the primary task is... Executed correctly. Where can I apply for this job? <laughs> Man, I wish. Just, just, <laughs> just uh, every single file you come across that says PDF file, murderer, you know, rapist. You just bam, bam, bam. You just eliminate all of them, like the death note. And then you get paid, which is like, damn, nice. Remember, the fate of the world lies in your hands. Humans march towards the great dying. They always teeter on the precipice, creating endless chaos. Politician, bam! Politician, bam! Politician, bam! Just kill all the politicians! I mean, let's be real here. Like, there's so many old politicians that are just way too fucking old. I just need to, like... Retire or die already? 
Then again, there's a lot of young people that are really, really uh, insufferably annoying, and them becoming politicians doesn't really fix anything. The humans march toward the great dying. They always teeter onto the precipice, creating endless chaos. I don't know if this is a metaphor for how normal life works, or if this is like a fantasy premise or something. We keep humans from falling off. We establish the equilibrium and keep the chaos in check. For that reason, your actions will Okay, this is this is this is an abstract. Okay, I understand. Why did you hire the woman in the killdozer shirt? I didn't even know those shirts existed. <laughs> Man, your skeleton would be so small. There's a there's a character in Match the Gathering called Tiny Bones, and all they do and all Tiny Bones does is steal shit. In order to like uh, give uh, the trinkets away to uh, to their to their ghost friends in the swamp of Urborg, <laughs> I'm not small. I'm a bonely chaplain. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why me? Because someone has to. Come along. I will now show you your workplace. I'll, I'll show. I'll actually show you like the Tiny Bones cards, because Tiny Bones is kind of cute, because they really are just like this tiny skeleton. That's all they are. They're just a tiny skeleton that steals things. Okay. One more thing. This will be your seven-day evaluation period. When the week is done, you will be assessed. One week to show us what you are made of, Reaper. The Kirby stuff make me more or less qualified for this job. <laughs> Ooh, hmm. I'm not sure. Kirby kills a lot, so maybe it does make it you more appropriate, yeah. I'm going to try and play this game totally seriously. Interesting. I have a phone at least. Good for procrastinating. I wonder what's inside. I wonder what's inside. Good for procrastinating and scrolling through Cocker. Why Cocker? What? Science Today. Team of rag tag oil drillers sent to outer space to, ca to counter imminent asteroid impact threat. That's funny. What phone is that? Is that? Does it run the mobile games? Is it an Obama phone? Pro News. Are we seeing the start of an apocalypse or is it just climate change? Is it the same thing every time? It appears to be. Okay. Marker of death. Better pick it up and start marking files. Okay. I wonder what's inside. Nothing. Nothing. Wait, can I put stuff? Oh, we can manipulate our environment like papers, please. Cerberus's den. Feed your soul. Open on weekends. What happens if I do like this? Oh, it's on—it's just floats or on, on the ground or whatever. Poor Grim. Welcome, Grim. Here are the files on humans who are life th in life-threatening situations. In your domain, I am granting you time to settle in, so no difficult rules and requests as of today. Quote for the day: One human has to die. Send me the files by fax after you have made your decision. Good luck on the first day. One human has to die. Okay, all right. <laughs> I could pick a name for myself as a grim. I'd name myself Natural Causes. Well, I mean, yeah, death by natural causes, of course.
We have two files. Ronald Kirschen, 29, firefighter. Ronald's been working as a firefighter since their late teens, pledging to give their life to protect the people of Cosmopolis City. In remarkable physical shape, they've been organizing athletic events for communities all over the country to raise awareness for fire safety. Bruno Billis, 43, drill master. Bruno is an infamously gruff drilling expert who has been working on deep sea oil rigs for countless years. They have a tense relationship with their offspring, yet have lately been attempting to reconnect and make things work. Oh man. Ronald, why do you have shit in your name? I was literally having that thought. So someone has to die. Um... Let's not have another Dolphin Bell incident. Let's, uh... Go with this guy. Okay. Like... I don't need that reminder every time. Cool. What the fuck is going on? What ho, customer! Welcome to Porter Metro Mortimer's Blunder Emporium! As you may guess, I am Mortimer. The Mortimer. The one you may have heard of. The famous, nay, infamous Quartermaster. No, they're both wholesome. Yeah, but one of them had to die. I had to pick one. Someone dies in a rig, they just die, but if someone renowned in the community dies, the community will work to continue their mission together, so it's okay. Yeah, I guess so. Like, my thought process was sort of... If, if you're a fighter, fire, fighter and you die firefighting, that's just kind of like a martyrdom situation, you know? If you die in a rig, though, you're just like a statistic, and, uh, that sucks. So I'll let the guy uh, try to reconnect with his kids and not die on, uh, you know, in another Dolphin Bell incident. What makes you infamous? Why, I was the very Pirate King of Lore, feared across the world, even as I have grown most humble with age. I still carry within me glory day. Oh, uh, sure, okay. Mayhaps the wares of me Emporium will impress ye more. Browse at your will. If anything, death, that's just the firefighter message of being more strong. He hasn't had kid yet. Kids yet, if the oil rigger died, maybe his kids would grow up jaded. So, I, maybe, I don't know. I have no money. Worn? Autumn Falls, elegant countenance is meant to be worn for celebrations during the gloomiest time of year. It really brings out the eyes, those deep, soulless, empty, dark eyes. Okay. Threnody to desolation. Peculiar flex twirl disquietly inside this glass globe. Never settling. In the middle of the storm stands figures too difficult to discern. Everything seems to be in a state of constant transfiguration. Annals of Transients. The Annals of Transients help keep track of any passing temporalities. It counts days in a month, from 1 to 28. Those are all of the days. All of them. <laughs> Yes, it is literally a calendar. Okay. Okay. Oh. How do I stop this thing?
What is going on? I am trying to reach this place here and I can't. Because it like it just swings this thing around. This elevator is so unstable. Whatever. No! No! Fuck! Whatever. How do I... What do I... What's going on? How do I... What the fuck is going on? Oh, okay. Oh, the new death spawn. Welcome. How was your first day? Okay, I guess. Good, good. I understand it may take time to get activated. Everyone goes through that phase. Only the colored areas? Okay, that makes sense. All right. Remember, lives are on the line. I see exactly one person perished today, as tasked. Did you figure out the best choice? The best? There are only two options. Indeed. I am glad you are paying attention. In the future, I may require you to make more difficult choices. Imagine being a maintenance guy and you just see some dude swinging up and down like a crackhead in the elevator. <laughs> wild. Uh, elevator gone wild. Yeah. Such is the unfortunate, indisputable, incontrovertible, ironclad law of cosmos. Question? I don't understand exactly what I'm supposed to do. You are to mark the profiles I send you with the marker of death. Okay. Afterwards, you fax the files back to me. Any specific daily requirements will be noted in the letter. Not that difficult, yet. A new day awaits. Off you go now. Cool, all right. Money! Once Dad and I were driving around and we were trying to find the exit of a parking lot, so we were driving in circles and Dad's like, CCTV dude must be enjoying himself. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. But yeah, I can only go to colored areas, so only so no Mortimer. Okay. It's weird that I can click on this side as well, though. Oh, okay. Boss is talking to someone else. The Grim Office. Okay. Mortimer is not here. Oh, like, Jesus Christ is down here, I guess. Do your job. Morning, Grim. I hope you found your accommodations adequate. Here are the rules of the day. Follow them and you'll be okay. And go to, uh, over another simple task. Quota for the day. One human with an engineering or industrial background has to die. All right. Oh, like this is my money. That's kind of funny. Oh, and they just flip. That's cool. Science today. Asteroid threat miscalculation. Astronaut drillers brought safely back to Earth. The Daily Moon. Check this crazed old fart storm old fart storm in a wedding and punch the groom in the face. <laughs> oh, you can heads or tails them. Oh, interesting. Check this crazed old fart storm a wedding. What the f 
Local firefighter breaks neck while demonstrating impressive firefighting stunts. Ugh. Yeah, my bad. I'm gonna move my money over here. Well, actually, if I only have one coin... I only need one coin to, you know, flip it, you know? So. so, somebody with an industrial or engineering background. Okay. Mark F. Player. Fuck! Oh, sh fuck off! Fuck off, game! I wanna watch that video, damn it, game. <laughs> 31. Engineer. Aspiring film director. Mark originates from the island of, of Ayaria, but moved to Cosmopolis City at a young age. They studied engineering at the Polytechnical Institution, then started a side career as a MeTuber. Mostly videos about engineering, where they've gained a considerable following. Mainly, they aspire towards becoming a film director. My favorite character in this is the M. Etta reference. Polter Noman, 40. Bicycle repairman. Repairing bicycles is Polter's life. They own a bicycle shop. Designing custom bicycles and pimping up old rides. Experimental bike modifications and neon light installments are his speciality. Okay. Carmen Dario. Barista. Barista who hates coffee? That's Carmen. Since they find all coffee equally bad tasting, they unknowingly keep committing a grave sin when serving customers. Eating up old coffee in microwave. <laughs> Eating up old coffee in microwave. That's not a character, I'm just being dumb. Oh, okay. Right. So, somebody with an engine. So, I have to kill Mark or Holter. Oh man, that sucks. I don't have to kill whoever this is, so, uh... I have to kill... <laughs> I have to kill the... I have to kill the YouTube reference, or... some guy. Can we just kill the barista on Let's Player? Nah, the barista doesn't have to die. Uh, this is gonna die because it's cur because he's cursed. I'm gonna- that's what I'm gonna say. He's gonna die because he's cursed as fuck. He doesn't have to die, but it'd be funny. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna confirm my choices. How was the second day on the job? Good. Good. So, did you follow the rules properly? You know, maybe I'm not the most responsible with death. Maybe. I'm pretty sure I followed the rules. Great. Yes, everything looks to be in order. Continue the good work, and do not let tough choices get you down. Sounds great. Great indeed. We could use boss forms with your attitude. I assume that it's eventually going to give us really hard choices, like with like a bunch of children or something. I hope I get to kill yes, more well. people. <laughs> you will need it. See you soon. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Cool. So now I have 700 money, or 600 money. I still don't think I can buy anything. Let's go check. Jolly Roger. Again, ye honor me, tiny abode, with your visit. Oh! Unholy smokes. Ah, the visage is in equal parts bold, gruff, smooth, and cool, straight from the old days, when expensive advertising, smoking told me was cool. Boo the gerbil? I don't know if there's any point in buying anything yet. But I think I'll just, uh, finish up. Oh, boss doesn't have, uh, anything to say. 
So, does his Emporium change every morning and every night? Whoa, a seriously terror-inducing visage, but then again, who wouldn't want to look like an antediluvian monstrosity? Besides, tentacles are extremely useful and practical. Ethereal Resonator. This resonator collates accelerated electromagnetic waves of various frequencies generated by the artificial vibration of eternal recurrence, which travel through the ether, then blast them at you. So this is a radio, I assume. Sure. Shiver my timbers. Tis a tale most sordid. I dare not even recall the details, but since you wish to hear it, I shall tell it forthwith. There I was, scouting some rickety office building downtown, and I saw this in an elevator. Went in, tore it out, and made a run for it. <laughs> the device has immense power. You turn the knob, and infinite pleasant noises come from it. Some might even call it music. Who a Baldur's Gate reference? Probably. Like, it's kind of weird to name a pet Boo, and then, uh... Oh, this is groovy. So there's three musics? To the, uh... Okay, let's read this. I wish I could zoom in on this. Morning, Grim. A new day dawns. You ought to know the drill by now, but just in case, here is another simple one. No special requests today. Try to follow the rules and choose the appropriate... Okay, just two people must die. Okay. Wow, we have a lot, we have a lot of papers. We have a lot of papers now. Okay. Theoboryarskij. Politician? Oh, we're gonna kill this guy, probably. Leo has been in politics for over 40 years. And in that time, they've worked hard on relaxing the government's meddling in the real estate market. Although nobody has found a proper proof, there have been rumors that Leo's taken many bribes from a number of realtor agencies. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fucking obliterate this guy. Oh! Are they all? Okay, no, they're not all politicians. Okay. Satya Dar. Governess. Satya is just making some extra money providing teaching services in a couple of wealthy private households. They're saving up for a lengthy worldwide trip during which they plan to visit as many countries as possible. Satya is an avid fan of kite flying. But she's also a politician. Columba Hunter. Columba is a distinguished war vet and these days working as a well-regarded passenger airline pilot. They're happily married and have five children. As a hobby, Columba is extremely interested in the history of religious buildings. He doesn't seem so bad. Uh, I mean... I guess so, but like, what are we, what are we not hearing about what she does at her job? You know, what are we not hearing? Alora Harnack, choir singer. 21? She looks 80. Laura's a professional singer who joined the church choir at their local town. They offer their singing skills to the church party to be more devout and partly to have better access to church wine cellar. Oh, that's kind of... That's a bit yikes. Ashley Day. Dale? Yeah. Train conductor. Choo-choo! All aboard the best train ever. Whichever train Ashley is conducting, they constantly broadcast uplifting messages and jokes. Writing the pastor's day. Um... I think killing her would kill, like, all the people on the train, right? So we don't want to do that. That'd be a bit much. Uh, but we're definitely going to get the politician. Brain girl should live. Yeah, I think a bunch of people will die if she doesn't... If she dies. Train girl... She <laughs> Funny you say girl, but she's 53. So, so like, 
cool, yeah, tutoring people's great and all. Like, for tutoring rich people is fine and all, but, like... She's a governor. She's a politician. So, like... The choice is very simple. Not gonna kill the airline pilot. He's probably towing a plane. Uh, this girl is kind of cringe, but it's fine, you know. I don't judge wine girl. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah! Oops, sorry, I moved my window. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Can we go to Cerberus' den? No, we can't. Okay. Okay, they're different per day. All right, I understand. They are different per day. Grim, my latest spawn. Three days you have been with us. How do you feel? I feel hungry all the time. How is that even possible? This is the most humanoid thing our character has ever said. Probably some of the psychic residue left over from the creation. Making a death is not simplistic outlook. <laughs> now, let me take a look at the files you sent in today. Right. Everything looks to be in order. You have followed the rules and marked the correct amount of profiles. There really is not much else to say. You may leave. See you tomorrow. Cool. All right. Got that money, money, money again. Let's go down and check the Emporium. What ho! How can me humble and not at all adventurous self assist you today? Oh, we might buy the... Oh my goodness. Ephemeral Mortality. A coin, the thing which usually makes up the largest portion of any buried treasure, okay? A cursed gourd. I want this. I also want this. A looking glass gazing ultimately deep into the abyssal depths of the underworld. It reflects everything. Well, mostly just you. I don't need to see my own face, actually. Ah, a spooky tale if there was one. Stumbled upon a gothic-like castle during me travels once. Seemed like good loot at first, but nay. A monster hunted them corridors. Head large and round, eyes shining like two lamps aflame. Twas paralyzing. Never have I been so frightened of anything in my life. Turns out, it was the Baron who'd got the curse of the wear pumpkin. <laughs> only happens during full moons, though. <laughs> Even then, only one month a year. <laughs> so tis not much of a curse. I don't even know what we do with Veggie Gourd. Another five profiles. Grim, have you looked outside today? It rains. It has been raining for hours. Appropriate to accompany the despondence with me. Well, here are some rules for you. Quote for the day, three humans have to die. Oh God, three. So now we're going straight to the majority. Pro news, all survived in a plane crash due to a skill for efforts of a pilot. Yeah, see, I knew that if we killed the, the train lady or the uh, the pilot man, that, like, a bunch of other people would die. So. Pro news, local politician dead after being struck by a car. Police have not yet ruled out a deliberate hit. Good. Kill the politicians. They all suck. All the ones that say they don't suck also probably suck. Nice symmetry going here. Bartomeur Sotomayor. Guru. Bartomeu experience. Hold on. Experience the spiritual awakening after eating moldy cheese of questionable origin while on a vacation. Now they spend their time regarding their newfound wisdom to anyone willing to listen. The problem with people like this is that there's a good chance there's some weird sex cult leader, you know? Florence Olua. 
organizer. Lawrence is one of the central organizers behind canvassing for the re-election of popular politician Baron Sander. When not engaged in political campaigning, Florence enjoys long bike rides and tending to their small garden. Claudia Arfausi. Position President. Claudia is the current president of Formos, recently elected after years of working as a professor of economic theory. They are known for being critical of exploitative structures and pushing for more wealth equality. They have three kids and eight grandchildren. My goodness. Red guy should die because it would be funny to see his reaction to the afterlife. Yeah. Where do I put this marker? I guess I put the marker all the way over here. Bart Green, 54, banker. Bart is, white, is a wealthy banker married with two kids. They had an affair with the brother of their spouse. What? Okay. But the partner found out and took off with the kids. Then the brother committed suicide, and Bart and Sara moved to a huge countryside mansion where they wait alone to meet their lover again. Yeah. Gate, like, like uh, some interesting... Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that we get to kill three people today. Also, the marker is still not where I want it, but... Benetton Cyrano. Comic artist, podcaster. Benetton, an artist and writer of graphic novels, is open full of is often full of signs and irreligion. They host together with a pal a religion-themed podcast without being a jerk towards the beliefs of others. Pleasant listen that brings bi-weekly amusement in their free time. They're dedicated to crafting intricate poems in many languages. Grim. I am watching. You should mark this profile to live. Interesting. So that's like the game checking to see if you're paying attention. I have immediately forgotten. Is it three people? Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's kill this man, this guy. He's a cheater. Like, he has remorse, but, like... I'm sorry. You have control. Have some self-control and care about other people. Also, he's a banker. Like, there's so many reasons to get him killed. So this is a political lady. This is a politician. This guy is a, a hippie who might be a sex cultist because that's what a lot of these people are end up being like, uh, so. Critical of exploitative structures and pushing for more wealthy equality. Man. President sounds like a commie? I'm not sure because they, because they, they're a professor of economic theory. one of the points of communism was that you're just kind of ignoring how economics work. <laughs> just completely ignoring it. Too complicated. Get it out. Just give, just everybody get free shit, you know? You know, maybe, maybe we, uh, don't pull like a, like a Luremberg trial thing and kill this person just because they also work, they work for a politician. I think I'm gonna get. I think I'm gonna get uh, you and you because I think you're probably a sex cultist. Yeah, die, live, die, die, live. All right. AOC, isn't it? Oh, she does. Okay, well, that explains why that shouldn't matter. Grim, there you are. Let us be quick. All the profiles are here, just as requested. Excellent work. You even adhered to my little test note. I commend you for exhibiting vigilance. I am beginning to sense a tinge of pride growing within me. 
I did not expect you to turn out such a good and dedicated trooper. Well, he hasn't exactly given me people that have, like, are faultless and sh should never die. Like, if he, gave, if he gives me a bunch of pictures of, like, children and it's like, kill five of them, it's gonna be, then it's gonna be a bit difficult. If you keep this up, you will get far. You may be even promoted to a middle management position. Imagine the possibilities. I've heard middle management is awful because if you actually want to, like, do good things, it's very hard. But if you're a piece of shit, lazy asshole, then you basically just get free reign to control everyone. But I've heard middle management sucks before. Give me the job, fate. Let me kill the vegans. <laughs> yeah, like, they'll just die from their diet, you know? Like, nothing wrong. It makes sense. There's no bias here. What if fate is actually the cat? The cat is speaking through the through the, the humanoid. Anyway, I am quite busy tonight, so you can go. Until tomorrow, Grim. Vegans with animals on social media force them to also be vegan. Yeah, kill the... Yeah, I agree. Kill them. Absolutely massacre them. Dressing nude, I need... Oh, I need to buy the mirror so I can even put on new clothing. Ah, uh, tis wondrous marvel. Once upon me and me crew sailed the southern seas and came across an accursed lighthouse. Plundered the lot of it, even the mirrors. Built the frame from useful driftwood washed ashore from the ship we rammed into. <laughs> Covers it in all gold, too. Coarse. I, a proper beauty. What is this? Yeah, it's too expensive. This guy just makes making shit up about all the products he's selling. I support it. Well, yeah, because it's funny. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, but where where is like uh my pumpkin hat? I got a pumpkin hat, right? Oh. <laughs> Ooh. 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 I like uh I like this sort of goes with the coloration. This sort of goes with my suit's uh, coloration, so I'll... <laughs> and my sprite in here changes. That's excellent. What's new? I just want to take a look. Wait a minute. Is this lit up? And All oh, right, right. That's my office. Of course it's lit up. Have ye seen such deals before? Tis ye who plunders me. Right, we have the globe... Okay, so th we've already seen those before. Does Fate have any extra thing he wants to talk to me about? No, he does not. Okay. Open me. Morning, Grim. Good you are paying attention after all. We can all allow workers to daze off or become complacent, else mistakes may sneak into the workflow pipeline. Quota for the day, two humans must die. Spare any humans with science background. The so spare scientists kill two people. All right. If you enjoy the routine, that's fine. Crow News. Disaster strikes as the leader of our southern neighbors killed. Leader of our southern neighbors killed by an unidentified assassin during an official visit. Oof. Intelligence agencies uncovering connection between Formosa Ultra Rich and the presidential assassination. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Unexpected tornado destroys mansion of a wealthy ex banker. <laughs> Polito. Belen Sander leading in the polls by a wide margin. Yeah. Culture Mag, climbing the charts. 
Freed Comrades finally hit sixth place in religion themed podcast list. Bro news scientists discovered new strain of super tuberculosis. Oh, that sucks. Sucks to suck. Let's go through them one at a time this time because we have to spare all scientists. History teacher. What is history anyway? Oh, right. Emmanuel Snow. A collection of stories made up by those who have access to power. And even then, it's, a full, it's full of mistakes and errors. That is why Emmanuel has grown ever more interested in teaching alternate theories to their students. Th that's kind of a science thing, but not quite. Statistician. Stefan Ashby. Stefan lives and breathes statistics. They work as a statistical consultant at several companies and give lectures at the university. Every time they get drunk, they start ranting about the misuse of p-values. I thought he was wearing a baklava, but he's just black. <laughs> Theodore, Joseph, Karoski, Pilgrim. Nobody really knows when Theodore started their pilgrimage, but it is speculated they have been walking along various pilgrimages' path, helping random strangers and righting wrongs for almost ten years. Oh, excuse me. Ba Balaclava. Oh, right, right. My, okay, he, this guy is... A scientist. I'm glad this isn't a timed game. Climate scientist. Game designer, digital artist. Okay. So... This guy might be a, technically a scientist because math is science and science is math, I guess. This guy sort of. I imagine one of them is like, he's a scientist, but he grapes children on the weekends. I mean, yeah, like, maybe one of their smiles is uh, off. So, Cersei Hall, game developer, digital artist, as al she has always had sensible ideas and fantastical visions, which is why they're now in charge of developing the latest expansion of Planet of Peacecraft. <laughs> Fuck you, game! I'm just noticing we have a uh, dialogue we look at. Are they worth it? Mm -hmm. Click's tongue. Yeah, no. Oh, human, what did you get yourself into? Yes? No? Maybe? Hello? Do not go gentle to that good night. <laughs> Planet of peace crap. Fuck you. Oh, God. So I have to... I'm worried that this guy is technically a scientist, so I'm just going to hit live, and I'll pick from these other three. But two of them have to die. Oh, man. Kill her so Deathcraft can be the lead game. <laughs> yeah, what, what if she's responsible for... You know, one of the expansions sucking, you know. And you know what? I'm sorry, my dude. You're, you're just like a vagrant, right? This guy is kind of wacky. I don't think that means he needs to die, though. This guy is like a vagrant, and I don't really know what he's doing, so... helping people. Oh, right. That, yeah, you're technically correct. Man, I don't need a keyboard at all for this game. This is a pure point and click, to be honest. 
What a day, Grim. What a day. Let us go over your conduct. Uh, what? Good. I see the okay. correct amount of profiles. Today seems to be in order. Anyway, Grim, five days you have been with us. How does it feel to make the difficult choices? I still feel awful about every choice. Not really. I didn't like it at first, but I've grown to enjoy it. I don't know if I would say that. Cats wearing business signs are so cute. Well, I'm glad you think so. The problem is that most cats fucking despise having any object attached to their body. Like, if you find a cat that does not mind having the collar or m having a little hat, that is, that's actually a rare occurrence. <laughs> Uh, a job like any other. Is it, though? I can almost imagine what a normal, basic, dreadful, everyday job would feel like. But think of the humans. Do you think our office is the appropriate way to deal with them? I'm not sure. Ah, the question is too difficult. After all, you will not even live the week. You have not seen what the tradition has wrought. This control over all the lives, unbeknownst to the humans, do you not consider it unethical to make the choices you made? I mean, if I were to speak on behalf of myself in real life in this scenario, then I guess I would say this. I'm not happy about the situation, no? Yet you have no opportunity to elicit a change. It may sound unfair, but it is not. The office is perennial and venerated. Eons we have spent designing the appropriate methods and strategies. We know what we are doing. I guess that makes sense. Oh. I do apologize for taking up so much of your time. Before you go, are there any questions you would like to ask me? Why haven't I seen any underage profiles? Ah, the children. They are a special case. Oh! For a different set of departments to deal with. You will not find any yourself. Are there many offices or departments? Countless. They all have Reapers working in them? Myriad. Wow. Exactly. Anything else? What about animals? Did they get a department? Absolutely. All living beings have to be processed after the end. No escape. Even plants. Yes, there is a department for plants. Do not ask about the plant department. What about... What about the department of microbes? I have a feeling that if they literally have departments dealing with all deaths that ever happen, like 99.9% .9 of this entire organization is devoted to single-celled organisms that live in, that, that are birthed and then die within hours or days or months. Like, can you imagine the departments for bacterial deaths like that that's so many organisms just dying and dying okay so for one of my for my question fibro is one of those invisible afflictions where you can't outwardly see it like you can a broken leg that also makes it easier to fake but easier for people to pretend it isn't real too with that, tell me your thought about Boogie and people faking in general. Let me sit forward for this.
Oops. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, what was I, what was I trying, what was I thinking of saying? Hold on a moment. It takes a lot of a complete lack of uh, just any consideration for you to lie about something so significant, which is, you know, like the grass is green, right? Like it's, it's more or less obvious, uh, but it does speak to just like, like some people might not think it's a big deal, right? Like, oh, you're just lying about this and that. You know, it's not like lying about something else. Like, oh, it's not like you're a murderer or whatever the fuck. But, um... It's already very frustrating knowing how much in the world is filled with, like, distrust for people. Because there's just such an endless tide of, uh, lying motherfuckers. Especially on the internet. Um, and I think in, in with Boogie in particular, the reason it's so... It's so hard to deal with. Because, like, what the fuck even is he at this point, other than just... <laughs> All we know about him at this point is that he just likes to say whatever he possibly can to be given attention and or money. And obviously, that sets... This isn't even just Boogie. This is really just, like, the whole broad of what you, of what you asked, because... Uh... How am I trying to put this? <laughs> Funny. Fibrofog immediately just... Wiping my brain, my brain clean. Uh, just clean of all thoughts. And uh, the continuation of my sentences... And yet... It's a fucking asshole thing to do, because it really just sows a type of distrust where people are going to always question who is... like, is just fucking saying bullshit, or who just wants attention. And it's very frustrating because all these sort of things... Like, people like to think the internet doesn't matter. But we're on the internet so much that all the information we get from the internet is just inundated into our society and our brains. So whenever you have people lying about shit on the internet or doing anything on the internet, period, that has, like, a cascading effect across people in real life. Now, there's obviously lots of people who are isolated, who are older, who don't give a shit about technology, and so you don't, you're not going to see a lot of them. But for all the people who are growing up, all of their impressions about what life is like is influenced by the internet. So, like, when young people have to experience deceit in this fashion, it, it's gonna sow, like, future consequences, right? Like, how many people are going to be brushed aside or accused of lying or... or just w have something in their life denied from them because of just this sowing distrust. And, like, obviously, you know, people can say slippery slope. And I suppose that's true. Um, it's very hard to prove, because it's more of just like this, you know, an, an ephemeral idea that something is happening in general and that we can't really see it, see it directly, but that it happens. And I think that in this case, it's not just a demonstration of Boogie being a piece of shit for just being a liar. Um, but he really just doesn't... I don't think he... I think... Man, what is it? What's the opposite of ego? Like, solipsism? <laughs> like, he doesn't have a shred of perspective for anybody uh, else but himself. Because if he did, he might care about the... He would understand that there are ramifications for other people for what, half, for what he says and does. Um, so, like, 
man, it's it's hard it's hard to put into words how frustrating it is because it's at the same time it's sort of just this thing that it feels almost like we just have to accept it that uh, everybody has to be deluded about everything. And so when something like this happens, we just uh, we say, yeah, he's a piece of shit, and then we move on. But we don't we're not really able to spend a lot of time thinking about um, how it might affect people on mass. How might it affect people's thought processes and how it affects the young, the youths? Like, how, like how many like teenagers watch Boogie or watch the people that like interview Boogie or whatever, right? Like. How many people are being influenced by this type of behavior and wasting their money and and or just uh, developing cynicism for people who have not very obvious disabilities? It's very, very, it's very damaging. It's not just in principle terrible. It is that. It, it is that, just being a liar. But it also has lasting, it'll also have lasting consequences. Now, when you see people online claiming to have chronic illness, what are red flags that make you start to question if they are actually legit? My last question. Oh, God. I think... Oh, man. Well, I feel like everybody who has a real disability is going to have a different answer to this question. Um... Because when you have an invisible illness that is invisible in real life, then, you know, that's one thing. That's like one layering of frustration. But when it's on the internet, you don't know if anybody's saying the truth about anything. Right? Like, somebody can say that they've broken all their all the bones in their body. They have glass bones and paper skin. And every morning they break their legs. And every afternoon they break their arms. But you can't see them. You're not talking to them face to face. They're just some fucker on the internet. And so, I think red, I guess if I have to try and think of red flags, it's probably, it's probably very much like what Boogie did, where you just tried to use it to get lots of attention, where you're griping and you're moaning and you're whining in like a way that just isn't very constructive to anybody's life. Like, uh, I don't go on the internet and start announcing to everybody that I have fibromyalgia. I, I don't really enjoy the idea of doing that. Not just because of just fear of reprisal for people be thinking that I'm a liar as well because I'm another faceless person on the internet, but more so because why would I want to draw attention to that when it's already, like, such a problem in my life? Like, why why am I going to be going out, like, uh, trying to get attention from tons and tons and tons of people over it? You know? Like, it's it's fine to talk about your uh, your struggle story once in a while, but people seem to think that it makes sense to trauma dump on the internet. Um, and more and more, I think every, I think more and more every day I start to feel like uh, maybe more people are lying than we even think there are, you know? Because, because if, mo if a lot of disabled people feel the same way I do, then they're not really going to be going on the internet necessarily trying to announce to the world that they have chronic illness. You know, I think at most they'll go to, like, a Facebook group where where they can get support or some shit, right? But I feel like a lot of people don't really care about going on the internet and talking about their real disabilities. Because that doesn't help, that doesn't help me, it doesn't help them. But what it does do is get attention. Potential attention. Potential sympathy. And while sometimes it's necessary for you to involve that in the conversation, like if somebody, like if you're, at, like if somebody's asking me questions, like you're asking me right now, it's like, yeah, like it's obviously I have to talk about it. Like that's one thing, but like doing it out in the open and insisting about it and trying to like make it some identifying part of yourself is very strange because it doesn't help anybody to know. And the only way it helps you is just to get attention. Um, but if I'm going to be totally honest, because the internet is so hard to, like, it, it's so hard to know what people are saying at all. Who's a liar and who's not? You know, like, people have to, like, literally really go out of their way to, like, meet each other with more, with, like, really share lots of personal information in order to confirm whether or not somebody is real. 
And so as a generality, like, you, anybody could lie about having a disability on the internet. Which already obfuscates how uh, difficult it is to uh, know who, to, like, just know what is what. And uh, what happens as a result of people not knowing, right? Like, like, it sucks in real life when people just don't get it and they don't know. And they can't know because they're not gonna know. They're not gonna know you. You have a disability unless they really spend a lot of time around you. So like, you know, it, it's it, it again. It's just this cascading effect of like people on the internet. Just the nature of the internet makes things hard to talk about and hard to believe. And I think when someone like Boogie is getting caught, that just that just confirms people's suspicions and makes everything even more. More difficult. Like we have a hard time knowing what's what, right? So if somebody's telling you that they that they have glass bones and paper skin, it's like you have to make the choice of giving them the benefit of the doubt or being suspicious. And I think more and more people are just uh, going to be more and more suspicious as a result of all this nonsense, this type of nonsense. Thank you. That was good. Sorry for dragging you from the game. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I was trying to, like... It's very funny because, like, my disability contributes to why that was those, those were all such hard questions to answer. Because it's like I have a thought, and it just gets lost in, like, the fog. And I have to reach for it and go through so... I have to go through so much nonsense just trying to come up with normal conversational things to say in response to, like, important questions. Right? And so it's just... Because, like, I guess what I didn't mention is that if I were to, like, really dig my nose into it, like, when we were first watching that shit about Boogie, it was genuinely fucking enraging. You know? I sort of didn't... Me I, I didn't really say it because it's, like... It's one of those things where it's, like, obvious... Like, everybody should be enraged by it. You know, it's like common sense be enraged, right? I just think it's important to, like, talk to someone affected by this. Sure, I'm making fun of them, but it's still important. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Like, because it is important because as funny as it is, now much of a piece of shit boogie is now common sense it is to just be angry with the guy. It does have... La I do think it does have lasting cascading consequences where all these people are just going to be more suspicious of more people who talk about their illnesses on the internet and you want to know what you want to know what must be the hardest thing to be on the internet somebody who is obese and trying to lose weight who also has a real chronic illness diagnosis of some kind that must be that is un... I cannot even imagine how fucking hard things would be. Like, if I was actually, like... Like, I was actually fat fat of some kind, and I have to deal with what I already have to deal with, I cannot picture how fucking unbelievable it is to have to put up with. Like... But, like, hypochondriacs and liars make things... In fact, let me give you an ex... Like, here's the thing. Let me give you an example. Public opinion matters about this type of thing, especially in the United States, because we vote on laws that affect our health care. So this, I'm not going to speak of my opinion on this topic that I'm about to mention, but rather just explain something that is real. Uh, transgenderism, like the public view on transgenderism, has an effect on whether or not Medical insurance can be issued to people with gender dysphoria. It is mostly universal, last I checked, in the United States, that a lot of that stuff for being transgender is considered cosmetic surgery. Now, if public opinion was different, there's a chance that it would be covered under medical insurance. Because people would think, oh, no, this is like an illness. It deserves to be under medical insurance. Um, now pivot this back to Boogie. Public opinion of disabled people on the internet does matter in the United States 
because it is going to determine in the future what the laws are like. I know it sounds fucking ludicrous to say that Boogie is going to make us lose health insurance or whatever the fuck, but, like, if you think about it in aggregate, that's literally how it works. So, like, having somebody who so many people see, so many people witness, and if those people are impressionable and young, they're going to get this idea of distrusting people with disabilities. And the people on the internet who are fat and disabled, or people who are fat who are just trying to lose weight but are having a hard time doing it. Like, it has this cascading effect on society that will be reflected in, like, legislation. And as a result, it'll be involved with insurance. And as a result, it'll be involved with people's economic, you know, security. And so, like, it, it's this crazy butterfly effect of to say, like, oh, because Boogie lied about cancer while he's just a fat, lazy asshole, that that's going to lead to, like, people becoming homeless. <laughs> Like, I know it's completely fucking ridiculous. But that's how the butterfly effect works, okay? Like, every little thing has the, the potential to contribute to something else that's very important. And, like... So, like, whenever somebody with a lot of, you know, uh, eyes on them, like Boogie, does something like this, it does have a cascading effect. Now, you obviously, you can't measure those things without history going by, and you actually like, counting, you know, going by the numbers, being a math person who does statistics and research and all that shit, so you never really know, no. But, like, it just logically, it just has, it is just obvious that it is a cascading effect that does affect the wider world, even if it's something as stupid as fat man lies about cancer online. Like, it, it, so it sounds dumb, but it could, in fact, have a cascading effect. So because of all the fakers online, a lot of people view real gender dysphoria as just a cosmetic thing. Right. Yeah, like, exact. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the result is that, like, trans people in the United States, currently, as far as I know, they cannot use their health insurance for certain things. And, like, if you pivot the public opinion against the disabled enough, like, how often before you know, other people lose their insurance. <laughs> like, it's it's absurd, but, you know, people people's mindsets do matter. And so when everybody is just suspicious, then that, ha that has a wider effect on a society, you know? By the way, you can keep asking me questions, like, throughout the stream if you want to break it up. I don't mind continuing to talk about it. It's probably easier for me to, to talk about it more like, free, free form anyway, rather than trying to, like, think of a, a larger essay in my brain, because <laughs> that's our, that's, that's very, that's very foggy, you know? Actively, my disability is affecting the flow of the stream. Holy shit. You're seeing it, you're seeing it all here, folks. It's wild, but it makes sense. It's only wild because humanity is one. Yeah. I always like science fiction where human humans are like space orcs, because it's very funny to picture, like, we, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna use the escape velocity. We're gonna break escape velocity with a giant cannon. <laughs> it's okay, this chunk is good. I don't want my vid to be too long, but you can always talk more and post to your channel. Right, right. Cool, yeah, yeah, cool. I would appreciate that. Oh, ho, ho. Greetings if you're from a, a different part of the internet listening to this right now. All right, let's get back to killing people. Well, you know, getting back to killing people until I have more to say. So. Anything else? Right. The basis for profiles. Is there a points system? <laughs> wait, wait. Is there a point system? What? Oh. <clears throat> Not at all. Me with my dead rewards card. That they all influence the world in many ways? In all and in none, yes. Is it predetermined? What about free will? Humans have some free will, sure. They can make a variety of choices. 
Yet what matters is that they cannot escape the inevitable. Yes, Booger cannot escape the inevitability of being disgraced even more. The life-threatening situations that bring them onto your desk. The result of their own deeds and decisions. Then there are some highly complex calculations, factors and aspects that influence the situation. But that is just a bit over your pay grade. So Ma do not worry about it. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of am surprised. I'm kind of surprised that they don't do like... Like, he said that we're not going to see any profiles of children. I'm actually honestly surprised over the idea that, like, we, we, that we're not going to get that. I feel like that would make the choices very difficult. Like, how you can earn points for $30 off groceries? It's kind of lame I wanted to see dead kids. Yeah, you need uh, fuel for the orphan factory. Anything else? What about the unliving things, buildings and stuff? Technically, uh, kind of, I guess. Ruins are like a type of dead. But then again, they feel so alive. Mm, I must ponder. This topic is a bit too abstract <laughs> for now. Let us table it. You killed 17 people, so you have enough points to save this coughing baby. <laughs> Anything else? Why do all the profiles refer to people as they? Uh-oh, please don't let this be a bomb. An astute observation. You see, Grim, our office does not operate on information about biological backgrounds or genetic composition. No ethnic no. data? Animal. Everyone you assess is simply human, after all. Excluding any monumental error procedure. Interesting. The bottom line is that the humans end up on your desk and that you must follow the rules. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't cringe. Anything else? Right. It has been enlightening. I bid you a good night. See Man, you tomorrow. These offices must be really crowded when like a war is happening. Barry, my fa famous YouTuber, Grassatara. What? What's up? Uh, thug Shakers? Oh, God. Uh, well, we're just playing a game where we're killing people because we are the Grim Reaper. And we can't buy any of this shit. End the day. Curious Grim asked all questions in first lore hub. There's multiple lore hubs. What game is this? This game is called Death and Taxes. We're playing as a Grim Reaper, and our job is to choose who lives and dies. But we also have tasks. So it's it's actually just a point to click. I don't even know why I'm putting my hand on the keyboard right now. So we have the globe again, and we have this. Annals of... Tr oh, that's the calendar, right? Grim Cape. Okay, it's just clothing. All right. Okay, let's just go. Let's take a look at these people. <laughs> Unalive Elon Musk. I mean, if we find somebody fucking annoying, then like, yeah, of course. Let's check our phone. Tomorrow science. There may be hope for our planet yet. Scientists on the verge of a breakthrough that may help the dwindling fish population. <laughs> oh wait, it's a video game. Yeah. Kill the PDFs and politicians. Yep, that's what we did earlier. Panic arises as new super tuberculosis esca escapes lab. Doctors believe elders to be the most susceptible. Oh no. Young game designer dies of a stroke caused by an overuse of poorly tested smart drugs that supposedly help focus and increase energy levels. She fucking died. She fucking died of, like, taking gamer meth! 
She died of taking gamer meth. <laughs> Jesus. His historicity? What? What is this fucking word? You know what? I'm gonna just lean in full proper because I keep having trouble reading any of this stuff. I'm so fucking mad. God damn it. All right, so we have to kill people with a medical background. So we're not, we are automatically killing this guy. Kermit has a warm, kind hearted personality and does their best to help troubled youth and marginalized people. They are a community activist and run a private practice for cognitive behavioral therapy when they aren't dealing with their grandkids. I really just don't know sometimes why it, I should maybe move the mute button to another key that like I just never press maybe to the tilde I don't know I don't even remember how much I even said the, guys we have, we have to kill six people uh, have to kill two people 35 or younger and everybody with a medical background has to die that's the rules for today I am getting kind of annoyed at uh, the ran me ma randomly muting myself somehow. Yeah, this person must die. Maybe this is a grandparent with an estranged grandchild named Guy, with whom they seek to reconcile. After retirement, they move to a calm country home where they spend most of the time knitting and own a marvelous collection of porcelain. Okay, they're not medical. Immunologist, okay. Uh, you must die. Medical background. Yay, Hama. 48 immunologist. For the past 15 years, Ye has spent every day working in a windowless concrete bunker, testing various vaccines in order to eradicate some of the deadliest diseases in the world during off times they enjoy lengthy bike rides. Yeah, it seems like a plague is about to happen with the super tuberculosis. Taxi driver, well, we'll read for you, sure. Milena Adamira. Milena is stuck in the middle of a taxi mafia turf war. They've had their tires slashed, their car chained to traffic signposts, the front window painted, and the interior of their car filled with foam. They now consider joining an app-based ride share service. You know what? Other than Odd Taxi, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of that time in, like, was it the 70s? Like, in the 70s, wasn't there an ice cream war in Scotland? Where ice cream trucks were, like, joining gangs and then, like, having thugs go out and destroy other ice cream trucks? <laughs> Isn't that a thing? 
Yeah, the Dankula. Right, yeah. Wow, that's an old video. So you're not medical, so you're not dying. Adira Perez, 75 retired. Adira retired a few years ago after they felt they'd saved enough money to live comfortably. They holiday due to the re their holiday plans were put on hold due to the recent outbreak of super tuberculosis. But not medical. Why is this guy not just like in blackface, but his clothes are in blackface? He looks like he fell through a chimney. Super Ghana Herpacyphilate. Ghana Herpacyphil Gates, okay? We need, we need to remember the gay AIDS. Ghana Herpacyphil Gates. Jafar Harun, 40, crane operator. Meteorocre crane operator, they make notable amounts of mistakes, then blame others for those mistakes. Jafar has now an alcohol problem, and they get abusive towards their significant other and children if they get angry when intoxicated. Pharmacist. He's the guy from Thank Goodness You're Here who keeps getting his house covered in ash. <laughs> Who's in the 35? Uh, only like one or two. We'll see in a moment though. Roy Zweig, I just wanna admit, I killed the guy, so I'm gonna wanna, you know, read his thing. Roy's job is to recommend with which over-the-counter medicines people should take. After getting some extra money from several high herbal supplements producers, they now exclusively suggest that real drugs contain chemical elements and natural supplements are the best. Oh, so this guy was corrupt anyway, so good riddance. Thirty-five or younger. So now we have to go th sort through thirty. This guy is forty. She's seventy. You're twenty. You're sixty-six. And you're we all okay? We have exactly two. So uh, sorry. You're in a taxi war anyway. You're you're a thug anyway. Annabelle's devoted themselves to become either an astrophysicist or an astronaut. Two things are somewhat related. They also enjoy painting, mostly nudes. Mostly nudes. Oh, good riddance. Good riddance, degeneracy. Okay. That's uh, five people. Now we have to pick one of these three. Uh, this guy's an alcoholic. This is just an old lady. This is just an old lady. I'm going to get rid of the alcoholic that's putting people in danger. That's one. Yeah, that's six people. Oh, and I have to hit live on, the, on these ones. That was six people, that was all medical specialists, and that was two people under the age of 35. Ooh, we can go to Cerberus Den now. I'm gonna check this first, though. Oh, right, there's a fucking hat and stuff. Sorry. Wow. Well, aren't you adorable? Are you dark-skinned, or are you like a, like a, like a soot-skinned goblin demon creature? I don't know. She is much quieter than the uh, than the fate the fate voice actor. Got a redhead and a Sims ghost. Yeah. I sure as heck haven't seen you before. You must be brand new. Just dapper like the river actor on the Abbot screams vintage. So, are you liking existence thus far? Lots of tedious paperwork so far. Oh, don't I know it. Administrative bureaucracy just can't be escaped. Let's find you. Eventually. But hey, that's why you figure out the small cracks in the system you can manipulate. Okay, newbie, before we continue, I got this little game I play with every fresh faced patron. It's real simple. Oh boy. All you gotta do is answer a series of questions, and I'll craft a personalized drink inspired by what you said. Book a quiz. Do ghosts play WoW? Um, yes, but only one, and that's the guy who... That was like the Chinese kid who died because he played World of Warcraft until he just starved to death. 
or dehydrated or something. That particular Chinese ghost is still playing WoW. Do Waddle Dees play WoW? They play they play Wanya of Wanya Craft is what they play. Of course it was Ch it was some East Asian play. It, it was an East Asian. I'm almost totally certain it was China. Because I don't think World of Warcraft is big in Japan. I know that it is very big in China, though. I love quizzes. Sure. Right. The gist. I'll describe some sort of a quiz situation, and you answer how you react. And I usually do four questions, and nothing else to it. There was some couple who killed their infant so they could play Farmville. <laughs> oh, God. What is wrong with some of these people? Can those people please end up on my desk? That would be great. I want to see her head on my desk. Farmville's not even a fucking game, really. When Farmville was like a mini game in World of Warcraft, it was literally the worst selling expansion in World of Warcraft's history. Everyone hated it. It was underfunded. It was boring. It had it it's it's end game raids were kind of fun, but that's only fun for people who do the raids every day. <laughs> like anybody else doesn't give a shit. Four questions, nothing else. Here we go. Prepare for question number you see a turtle laying on its back, belly, baking in the scorching sun. It beats its legs, trying to flip over, but it can't. I'm not out here help. You are not helping. Why aren't you helping? You are not helping. Why aren't you helping? I help those who help themselves. Man, isn't this relevant to our to the questionnaires you asked me earlier? <laughs> Like, oh, yes. Why isn't this person in a wheelchair just standing up? Why don't they just stand up, you know? <laughs> why, why don't they get on their hands and knees like they're being told to do? They're just not helping themselves. I like my turtle well done. What, I have to do everything around here? I have to do everything around here. I mean, I guess if I... I mean, if, if this was real me, this would have to be the answer. The only way I would not help, like, an animal in need would be if I was having, like, a bad day and I just am so fucking tired I don't want to bother. <laughs> Time for question number two. You and a friend are valiant but poor warriors. Venture out to slay a mighty dragon. It's a fierce battle. Interesting. And your friend thinks he slew the dragon, while in actuality, you did it. When asked, what will you do? When asked, what will you do? Why should anyone get my golden glory? Yeah. Like... Like, this is, this is easy. Like, I don't... He shouldn't be trying to lie about what happened. Next up, question three. Almost there. You behold two doors. One plain and old, the other forged of gold. The old one seems to imply disgrace and shame. The golden door cries of nobility and grandeur. It's up to your brave soul to make the first choice. Which door will you go to? So I don't like it. I don't like the, the glory door because it's definitely going to be like a monkey's paw. And the old one I don't want to go through either because... I'm going to die to a ghost. Maybe someone left cool shit in the old door and no one knows because no one checks. I don't know. I kind of want to choose the stupid answer. Because, like, again, I feel with those door descriptions, I feel like the old one is going to have ghosts that kill me. So I think I'm going to break the window. Go to Maka's. Oh, man. You have been talking so much about Borgir recently, and I want Borgir, but I really should not 
like, try and acquire more gear. <laughs> it... I really shouldn't, like, try and get five Whoppers to eat over the over a week. It's just not good. Him busy eating burgies. I wish I was. On a stroll around the loop of buildings, you pass it upon an unfamiliar animal. Their leg is trapped in a tedious trap, is bleeding profusely. Unfamiliar animal, leg is trapped, devious trap is bleeding profusely. The beast will likely not survive for long. How will you react? Berate the animal for being dumb and getting trapped. Draw your scythe and swiftly slay it. Okay, so here's the thing. In real life, if you put me in front of a, of a creature that I cannot identify, I'm probably just gonna, like, leave it alone. Ideally, I would like to be able to put it out of its misery. But, like, I don't know if I want to even approach like a creature that I am not familiar with? What if it it's poisonous? What if it like what if it wants to kill anything that tries to touch it? Like I would love to simply put it out of its misery, but I don't know if I am afforded that when I don't even know what this fucking creature is. Imagine after all this she just slides you a fucking sunny D squeeze pouch. Squeeze pouch. <laughs> oh, that's great. Draw your scythe and swiftly slay it. Don't interfere with the natural order. This is kind of funny because I would I might do this with one of my cats, but like I don't want my cats to be in a trap dying, so I think ideally I would want to put it out, out of its misery. I like this girl. Loud, hurtful, many references. Not difficult to figure out what mixture this has to be. Okay, so I got an achievement that said score a grouchy result on on her quiz. First up, four centiliters of salmiac licorice and two centiliters of a botanical spirit of licorice. Anything that's not gin, basically. I don't. Oh yes, I totally know how alcohol works. What the fuck? Are you quite sure? Okay, this one's called sour grass. I would not drink this if my life depended on it, probably. Because I would probably vomit. Good bay! I don't know what this is. I don't know what this reads as. The drink overflows with the taste of an oceanic planet in the throngs of a subcrustal collapse, a sharp and saliferous assault on the senses. The acerbic turmoil of a quake in crystalline cave glittering in all the colors of the spectrum, leaving you hollow on the inside. It's almost a death changing experience. I guess I like it. Heck, an understatement of the century. Now what else can I get you? Your tip jar is pretty neat. Who else works in the office? Heck, were I able to count and name all the folks? Likely haven't fully realized the size of this place. You've got you reapers and all the myriad departments, the custodian legion, the weirdest data grinders in the calculatorium, the abysmal archive of its own lists. If it doesn't taste like Popstar, I'm not drinking it. <laughs> I could pearl. I, I'm gonna pull a nerd emoji and be like, "Oh, so you, oh, so does does Popstar's dirt taste like chocolate? Is is Popstar a Willy Wonka world? Does does the mantle of its crust taste like a uh, 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 pop tarts? Yes. Oh, okay." Resources. 
But someone's got to deal with the internal issues. That's why Kirby lives there? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I get. I'm. Luckily, he has not decided to eat the literal entire planet. Noodle management. Nobody knows what they actually do. Higher management, but they don't visit us. Possibly ever. Same fate. Many of the regular workers come by the dead now, so keep your eyes and ears open. Yeah, bartender, can you deal with your Mick game? Yeah, she's so... He's so quiet in comparison to uh, Fate. What else you got in mind? Your tip jar is pretty neat. Oh, thanks. Mortimer found the original Oinker on an excursion to the Shrouded Zones. It's a bit of a hassle, though. It keeps multiplying. Take your eye off for a second and bam, tiny pickles everywhere. Go on, take one. Just make sure you feed it with some coins once in a while. Au revoir, little reaper. I like her. She's cute. Thinking with mortals. Fate is a lie. Pro Patrol. Fallen murderers. Does Snortimer just play Minecraft? I guess, perhaps. Grim Day. Eat your fate. I can't read this... Oh, Quartermaster Mortimer, 1% under exploring or something. That's a Green Day ref? I know that Green Day is the name of a band. Gus. Hello, Gus. The air is eerily cold as if frozen in place, too scared to move an inch. I'm a new Grim, 23. What's up? A fresh faced lemon head. Ugh, exactly what I want to see. The fist thing on their album cover. Ah, okay. All right. Hey now, Gus. Play nice. Well, seems I'm stuck with you now. You want to ask questions or something? Who were you before? What's that supposed to mean? You know, what human were you? Why does everyone think ghosts are dead humans? Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. That's an interesting, that's an interesting prerogative right there. Of course not. No. Ghosts aren't mere residue, a relic of humans, animals, or whatever other entities. Okay, can everyone hear me now again? Uh, so the laptop just froze, but I have restarted it and come on back here. So we'll try and get the game back open again and see. Uh, let's see how the autosave works in this game. Let's see how the autosave works. I sure hope we don't restart from the beginning. That would be very fucking annoying. All right. Continue day six. Oh. Okay, that's good autosave. Hi. Yeah. What? What do you want? A fresh fix. Hey now, Gus. Play no well, seems I'm stuck with you now. You. What's that supposed to mean? Why does everyone think ghosts are dead humans? Of course not. No. Ghosts aren't mere residue, a relic of humans, animals, or whatever other entities. We're just ghosts. We're beings unto ourselves. That's actually a cool idea. I am the ghost of a ghost. Wait. What? Hang on. You were a ghost and then you died? Yeah, pretty much. How does that work? How do you think? A ghost in around a long while, doing the ghost business, and then one day, I died. So you're like a gaseous extraterrestrial entity? I know what you're thinking now, and you know, there is a ghost department. Northeasterly direction down on floor 133. Not too busy over at Guy's Tall, though. Ghosts don't die that often. Come to the territory. <laughs> eh, something else you wanted? What do you do here? I'm the janitor. 
I clean up the damn mess you made. What mess? I haven't done anything. Ever looked in the mirror or thought about the clientele of this place? Where do you think the drink goes? None of you have a stomach. Anything you consume falls through the rib cage straight to the floor. <laughs> oh, I didn't really think of that. Yeah, you reapers hardly ever do. Always self-absorbed. Awkwardly, at least a little more considerate. I appreciate you. Gee, uh, thanks. Eh, something else you wanted? How do you clean things anyway? Simple. I float around and I'll possess stuff and make the stuff float into the trash bin. Like dust, for example. One dust particle at a time. Or the drinks. One droplet at a time. Not really tedious. Maybe a bit tedious, yeah. As if the highest management ever gave any thought to us lowly drones. We're all nameless custodians and spawns to them, literally. I get you, the management doesn't know how to run things. Exactly! This place is a complete sham and highest management is a joke! Alright, buffoons, if you ask me. Did you know my chair is super uncomfortable? <sighs> and why is all the technology in this place so crappy and old? I know, right? Get with the times already. We're not in the 6th century anymore. If I knew things were this slapdash, I never would have died. <laughs> As l like you have control of it, that, okay? At least someone understands what I'm going through. You know, I'm beginning to like you. A spawn after my own heart. I'll make sure to clean around your desk even better from now on. Bye, nice talking yeah, to you. Yeah, I'm gonna get back to work anyway. What the fuck? Uh, do we go to work or go to bed? Whoa, what the heck? Mortimer's. Hmm. Knock, knock. Who's there? That's exactly the question, ain't it? Who are you? We are the exalted Chimera, envied by all the blind, arrogant fools. We are Angst Ex Milio. We are nothing. A despicable failure. What is this lore? We are Vital, the guide who won't lead astray. If only you learn to listen. We are death. How does it feel? What does what feel? I don't understand. You know. Dying. You do remember, right? He's seeing you, reader. It's a grim world out there. Okay. Very weird. Ah, grim. It looks to be a rough day out there. New recruits often falter during dark time. Yet you seem to have performed adequately. How do you feel after such a day? Isn't it pronounced Chimera? Yeah, I had the thought to... Oh, well, the word that was used there had an A and an E. So like Chimera, but then she said Chimera, and I was like, what? There was a lot to do, but I worked on it all out. Good, good. We have to do what is necessary. Even if we do not fully understand why. Let us hope these days do not continue. Any idea of what happened? Some sort of medical calamity, maybe, like an epidemic? Interesting. An insightful streak may yet rattle inside that skull of yours. Off you go now, Grim. Good night. Cool. 
I like this game. We're gonna play it on, uh, we're gonna play it all week. We got paid, so let's, uh, I can get the cape or the, the calendar. Okay. Yeah, let's get the calendar. Blimey. We scoured now every inch for this calendar. Alas, mayhaps we raided too many merchant men for it. Cause turns out, it weren't even on a ship. Still worth it for the annals work on any year. Filled to the brim with arcane squiggles and short omens between the numbers. And in the footnotes. Also includes the major holidays of a hundred different civilizations. And all the name days. <laughs> I finally procured it from an old man on the steps of Acropolis. I totally want to see the evil guy run next time. We'll do, like... I mean, I wouldn't mind doing an evil guy save, if it's a separate save. Alright. Now, it's a new day. Bar is not open. What's the actual way? What's the new uh, items here? For ailments or a trigger to ward off a curse? I thought this said like cope on it, and I was like, excuse me? Lethian obl Obliviator. The Lethian Obliviator is used to remove grievous mistakes, meaning it erases whichever mark you made on a profile. One use only. Whoops. Crazy. Does he want to say anything to me? No, not really. All right. Noise. I got a calendar. Okay, see if we can clean up the mess from yesterday. That might give you just the boost you need. Do not forget, you may leave troubles behind, but new ones always lie ahead. Quote for the day, two humans must die. Spare humans who seem helpful against the troubles. Keep vigilant. Helpful against the troubles? Charlie Goch. Charlie has been helping their brother Albert David hide corporate money and avoid paying taxes for years, perhaps even decades. They have also been accused of insider trading and other fraudulent activities. They currently live in a mansion just outside of town. That was easy. Trisha Tala Laios. Phlebotomist. Is that like a throat doctor? Trisha has been doing... Benny puncture, punctures for decades. Drawing out a large quantity of blood, sometimes feeling like a vampire. Lately, their health is taking a turn for the to the worse, making their hands shake, a symptom they keep ignoring because they keep missing the veins of patient. You give flowers lobotomy? Oh shit, I have a piggy bank. Oh, can I put my money in here? Oh, I don't have money right now. Over there. Luis the Menace. Luis the Menace. Luis is the Menace. <laughs> Restaurant owner. Got munchies for shark fin, but can't find any? Any? Not if Luis the Menace is near. There's a big fan of shark fin and other questionable foods like turtle jelly, which Luis has served in their restaurant for a decade. They are also involved in distributing these food items to grocery stores. This has got... So as much as I don't like him killing sharks, he is feeding people. Blaze Masterson, 43, helicopter pilot. Blaze works as the Prime Minister's personal helicopter pilot. They love flying so much. They fly, they fly around all day, even when their employer doesn't need to go anywhere. All the money for fuel is taken from taxpayer funds. I don't know if that's that big of a deal. Like, it's annoying, but I don't know if it's that big of a deal. Christopher Wyatt, money launderer. 
Christopher opened a Waffle House in the middle of a Cacti Valley to have a reason to claim illegal income, but avoid customers. When a hiker finds the place, which sometimes happens, Christopher starts sweating profusely, then has to cook with 10-year-old ingredients. Wow. Erwin Redaboor, or something. Adult caregiver. Erwin went into the caregiver business when they ran out of things to do. In truth, they have very little care to give to give, and are very sloppy at their job, mostly trying to con the elderly by giving, to giving them money and having them buy fake insurance. I want to kill all of these people. Well, not all of them. I want to kill these two. I have to kill two, though. Like, okay, so she can, like, overcome this problem she's having and still help people. This guy is a questionable, but he's feeding human beings. This guy is mostly harmless. Like, he's wasting some taxpayer money, but I don't know if taxpayers would give a shit if a few hundred dollars is going to a guy's joyriding once in a while. Like, it's not that much money, surely. I really want to kill... I'm gonna kill this guy, definitely. He's a money launderer. This guy is a con artist. I know, I'm gonna get in trouble for this, but I'm gonna kill more than is necessary. So I'm gonna get in a little bit of trouble, but Snortimer should take their items and sell. Yeah. I'm gonna get reprimanded here, but. Welcome, Grim. It is the end of the week. Your performance review draws near. How do you think you have been doing? Crushing it. Profiles come in, I send them out. Clockwork. Interesting. Yes, your answer has been recorded for the site eval. Now then, before the assessment, let us look over your daily conduct. I see more people died than required. Just one! Just one! It does not bode well for the evaluation, but such is death. Let us get started. Now, where did I put those papers? Ah! Here we go. Right. Looking at these stats, the numbers say... Your conduct over the seven days has been most excellent. I am, sincerely, surprised and pleased by your display of loyalty. So much so that the office has deemed you fit for a raise. Make it rain, get a raise is the achievement we just got. <laughs> Even more money? Yes! We do what we can to provide for our spawns. Speaking of, the raise also comes with a prize. The office is proud to present you with an award of excellence. This I forgot to look at the phone. Workstation. Four perfunctory claps. Do not let this cloud your judgment. You still have much to learn many rules to follow. Four rules? One gets used to them, if in the right mindset. Fret not. As such, your seven-day evaluation period has concluded. You have passed. When do we get access to the fucking Jesus library? I don't know. I would like to... Until tomorrow, Grim. I think we can do one more day with our overtime. Plus zero! Oh, you get no money if you make errors. Ooh, that's kind of brutal. Oh, well, I guess. Best Newcomer. For your contribution to the killing of many humans. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know where I would have... Actually, you know, I should put the piggy bank here. It's not... I don't need it on my desk. Honestly, I could also do this. I don't think there's a big deal. 
like with sometimes looking at that. And now I can put this here. Morning, Grimanod. Hush ripples across the world. That is what happens when someone is not paying attention to their instruction. Keep this up and the world will be nothing but vacant ruins. Good for tourism, perhaps, but not much else. Okay, he doesn't want me to make mistakes again. All right, let's check the phone. Local shark population drops to a dangerous level. Our tasty creature is destined to go extinct. That sucks, but whatever. Pro news. Suspected fraud dies of a heart attack. As police officers come knocking on their door, a prosecutor says arrest was imminent. Oh, I can scroll much faster with by doing this. Okay. Quote of the day, three humans have to die. Spare any humans with a religious background. Yeah, let's get all the religion out of the way then. None, you're going to live. Sailor, you might not live. Motivational speaker. Nature, Mercury, Saint Eon. I, I, Mercury, Saint Ions. E or Eowns? Eowns, maybe? I don't know. Nature was not stingy when it came to granting charisma to Mercury. A true silver tongue, this smooth talker could convince anyone to do almost anything. As such, they found their calling and being a motivational speaker. Recently, they've included proselytizing into their oiver. So we have to... proselytizing, so that's religion. Masashige Oni Lanzo. Part-time scholar, part-time engineer, part-time musician who delights in building their own musical instruments out of scrap and spare parts. You might not be spared. Raven Kershid. Professional athlete. Raven is enjoying a moderately successful career as a deadlifter. They have a brother, Ronald, and a child, Mira. In their spare time, they like going hiking and camping. Mira is constantly inspired by Raven's determination and wishes to continue their footsteps. Wait, so I have to kill these three people? I must do it? That fucking sucks! Mabali Sef Sefu, a nun, obsessed with religion from a very young age. Mabali moved to the nunnery as soon as they turned 13. Whenever a stray thought of sin crosses their mind, they give themselves a good whipping as punishment. That's not healthy, but spare any with religious background. Proselytizing. I don't like these people living, but I don't want I want I don't wanna lose my money. Now all these people have to die. Martin Baltimore. Martin loves huge battleships. The bigger the better. What do huge battleships have? Huge guns. Martin also loves those. Martin loves so many things about working on enormous battleships they can't even verbalize all of them. I'm sorry, Martin, but I have a quota to fill. Uh, this also fucking sucks. I don't... Raven seems to be in a great place in her life, uh, but... I had to kill three people, and I had to spare the religious people, so I was only... I, there was act, there was really no choice, actually, if I'm going to be honest. That was no choice. Grim. Ah, yes, there you are. Good, good. <clears throat> okay, now, listen up. Great work today. You fulfilled your tasks adequately, and all that. However... An emergency has occurred which requires my utmost attention, and I must depart for a couple of days. Uh-oh. Kind of an emergency. Hmm. Okay, listen up and keep this to yourself. Scientists at the Sid Polar Terminal Research Base found something strange very deep. A whole kilometer. Aliens. This is a matter most peculiar, and could prove informative. Anyway, <clears throat> while I am gone, another will be in charge. This guy has as much, like, coughing issues in the middle of talking as I do. Even though you passed the evaluation, I cannot leave you without any supervision. 
You will have more freedom, sure. But it is not. They found freedom. Nugget? <laughs> Therefore, you will have to continue your daily reports as usual. I will be informed of your progress. Who will I report to? Why, you are already acquainted. It will be Lady Poddy, of course. Oh, the cat! This game is cool. I like it. I, I know what you're thinking. I do provide ancient powerful witches. Lefty and Obliviator. Ah, I might save up for this thing. All right, we're going to bed now. Fuck it, we have time for mo one more. Well, actually, do we have any, is there anything uh, new here? Friend, your visits like the sun, regular, and warms the room. Boo the gerbil. Baldur's Gate reference. Lord blimey, how did this wee monster even get here? Tis not really all that valuable plunder. Found the tiny fellow on the riverbanks of Styx itself. That's cool. The lifeless, adorable thing. Can't imagine it being useful or anything. But sure makes delightful squeaks when he stroke it. That's another Baldur's Gate reference, but to a different story in Baldur's Gate. So... Boo is from. Boo is is obviously Minsk is gerbil. In Baldur's Gate, but also. The river Styx, in D and D, runs through the plains. Um, it runs it runs through the plain of Avernus, which is also another Baldur's Gate adventure story. It, it wasn't the adventure story of any of the. Baldur's Gate games, but it is, but Descent into Avernus is a Baldur's Gate uh, storyline that was published by by uh, the people who made D&D. &D. And the River Styx runs through uh, Avernus. And the whole thing about that is that a city is being plunged, is trying to be plunged into the River Styx to kill everybody there, to fuel the blood war, but yeah, okay. From what I understand, Baldur's Gate 3 is essentially the sequel to Descendant to Avernus. Well, don't tell me whether or not Zariel is the city of El Torel. Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell me whether or not uh, Zariel is still a devil. Because that's spoilers for what's canon to Descendant to Avernus, I guess. When I played Descent to Avernus, we uh we turned Zariel back into an angel. Gouge's eyes! <laughs> Spirit Portal. Join Mercury on the path to glory, a commune for those who seek the revelation. Pro news. Single mother lost in fatal car crash. That fucking sucks. Young sailor shoots self out of a huge cannon. Were they not blown to completely to bits, you'd have seen their enormous smile. That is so stupid, and I love it. Where are the bees disappearing? Oh, God. Construction firm Screwco & Co. and local environmental activists in a stalemate over a railway site. Cultural mag submissions for My Ordinary Day ph Photography Contest now open. Interesting. Oh, my God, I have to kill the plants. Greetings from afar, Grim. So, right after I left, mere moments, it seems to me... Something happened at the plant department. Do not ask. As such, I need you to fill in today. Basically, as a grim for them, I hope. It, 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 <laughs> Basically, as a grim for them, I hope it is okay. Order for the day, three plants must die. We have to kill plants. Yovi Barba Golibifera. Age 14, position jobless. This plant with a common house name, Rolling Hen and Chicks, 
is a tiny succulent who likes sunbathing. It lives on the seaside between the rocks next to the seagull nest, never moving, enjoying the small things in life, like not being eaten by a snail or not having a seagull scream at it for a moment. Sequoia Semperveneres, 2,355, national symbol. This senior tree specimen has been growing on the outskirts of Cosmopolis City long before the place was even founded. It has received five commemorative plaques over its lifetime, all of which have been destroyed. Its habitat has also been recently disturbed by ongoing construction work. Scaflera arboricola. Companion. Also known as Lisa, this is a house plant of a photography student. In many cases, it has been over or underwatered. However, it has has quite a high tolerance for neglect and poor growing conditions. Its main hobby is our photosynthesis and people watching. Quarus Robur. One, eight, uh, yeah, whatever. City air cleaner. Quercus is a really large and old oak tree in the Cosmopolis Dog Park. It is a home to a family of squirrels while also providing a safe place for the local cat that likes to watch dogs and their owners walk by. I must kill three of them, and there's five. Oh no. Daunelia Musapula, age one, pest control. Dianea, a Venus flytrap, is hidden in the grass next to a small path on a local honey farm. It almost got stepped on by a farmer, a dog, a horse, and two children. It has good living conditions and plenty of food available every day. So as my... I wonder how realistic the game is going to be with this. Because, in reality, this might not kill the bees. It might be killing the things that are killing the bees. But I don't technically know, so I'm going to take a moment and hope that the game is being dumb and that this thing is killing the bees. I was preparing for children to die, not the plants. Yeah. So, I feel bad for this guy, but it's not serving any purpose, unfortunately. It's just there and exists, and uh, this thing, however, I want that to stay alive. I also want this thing to survive, but I need to kill three. I really don't want to kill this tree because it's housing wildlife. Um, it's housing wildlife. I don't want to kill this because it's, it's some girl's plant, but... In many cases, it has been over or underwatered, however, it has a high tolerance for neglect. I feel bad about this, but I'm going to kill this girl's plant. It'll be a lesson in uh, taking care of plants better. And then I'm going to have these two trees survive because they're much more important. Which is very fucked up, but then again, they're plants, so... What would my record on my desk be? Draws dumb shit, eats too much complaints? <laughs> Let's be real. That's a lot of people. In a paperwork position. The cat sits behind the table, very serious and official, like ignoring your presence. Oh my gods, you are so incredibly cute and fluffy! Slowly, the cat's eyes turn to her head towards you, her eyes blazing with annoyance. Continue. <coughs> Meow, she mutters, then places her paw upon some documents littering the table. The cat repeats a sequence of contented meows. Then curls back into a ball and closes her eyes. Hey cat, I bought you a gift. Give her the rubble dribble. dribble. The sacrifice. Appease the boss's calf with a gift. Lady Poddington's eyes grow wide and dark as you place the gerbil on the table. She pats the chew toy and with her paw. Squeak. The rubber toy squeaks eerily. Cool, cool. Nothing ominous here. The cat eagerly stares at the toy gerbil, fully ignoring your presence. Squeak. The toy gives out a sad noise as you make your way out to the door. I don't care. I don't know if the game is trying to say the cat is evil, but I don't care. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pet the kitty cat. 
I have only 600. Damn it. Well, no, stop. I didn't click on this. Fuck you. Get out of my sight. Okay. All right. We're not doing a fucking three hour stream. All right. I promise. Thank you all very much for joining me here tonight. I really appreciate you coming here to hang out with me. We will be back in two days, Friday, if you live in the United States, and we're going to continue with this game. I don't, I have no idea how long this game is. It is a three gigabyte game, which is a lot for the games I usually stream. So maybe this will be a long game. Maybe it'll be a short game. I don't care. I don't know. Um, but we're still going to, but we're going to play it the rest of the week as uh, we would normally do on uh, the Friday, Saturday stream. I don't care how annoyed she is, she's cute and fluffy. Yes. Cats are like goth girls. They can be as evil as they want and will lose no love. Yes. Even... <laughs> Agree. That is, a, that is wisdom of the century, Ragnarok. Very, very wise. Very correct. If you happen to be new here and you enjoyed hanging out with us tonight, if you think I deserve a follow, I'd appreciate that quite a bit. We stream three times a week for approximately two hours. And this stream will be re-uploaded to YouTube tomorrow night, where we'll join every single stream I've ever uh, done. So if there are any you want to catch up on, you can find all of them there. Link is in the About section. And my goodness, this is not the biggest deal, but we reached 100 followers. That's really cool. I don't know if this confers any sort of milestone on us, because it felt like uh, it was going real slow for quite a while. But it happened, finally. And so we're just going to be, yay, we're going to be happy about that. And uh, hope that everyone enjoys their stay here, enjoys the uh, the games, and that uh, you have a good week and a good time, and uh, that you'll come back, and we'll see you again very soon. So let me get out of your hair here for you now. Thank you all very much for being here. I appreciate your support in every capacity. I hope you have a good afternoon, evening, morning, etc. I will see you all again soon with more death and taxes.